Okay, we're back live here at Oracle Open World. Uh, this is theCUBE's exclusive coverage of Oracle Open World 2013. Oracle Team USA, Oracle Boat just won the America's Cup. We're here live in San Francisco covering all the action. I'm John Furrier with theCUBE, our flagship program. We go out to the events, extract the city from the noise. I'm joined with my co-host Dave Vellante. Dave, they just won the America's Cup, came back from eight to one, tied it, pulled the ultimate comeback in uh, international sports history. Kind of like the Red Sox beating the Yankees and uh, then running the table, then winning the World Series. I mean, amazing, amazing comeback. Well, at least, uh, at least Larry's uh, choice not to show up to the keynote yesterday, I, I guess in a way paid off. It would have looked even worse if they, <laughs> they had lost uh, by a mile today. But, you know, as we were talking about off camera, it looked a little iffy at first, right? They had a draft in behind them, and uh, I don't really know much about ra racing yachts, but, uh, it was that it was first exciting. attack that made the difference. That first turn, they had the boat speed. The key was the boat speed, Dave. You know, looking at the, at the, at the race, the key was the boat speed, and the boat speed was really how what Oracle got to win, win the race. Um, so um, that, that's exciting. Well, okay, and so we're back to tech here. Jake Cottrell is here. He is the uh, member of the office of the CTO at VCE, and we're going to talk about converged infrastructure. We're going to talk about Oracle. Jake, welcome to theCUBE. Thanks, Dave. Thanks for having me. So what'd you think of the race? Well, you know, when it comes down to $8 million carbon fiber vehicles flying at that speed and that velocity uh, going down the line, it's amazing. Um, I think of them like the Yankees of yacht racing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Yankee, well we're not big Yankees. Red Sox so. actually <laughs> in yacht racing, I think, was um, the analogy. So the we comeback had, thing. We had Yankee Annie. fan? <laughs> no, I'm just saying from a budgetary okay. point of view. <laughs> <laughs> Yankees numbers. <laughs> Well, Dave, um, you know, obviously we had uh, EMC on earlier and throughout the, throughout the day we had Amy McClure on from uh, talking about this, the VCE. So, um, you guys are out scouring the landscape in the office of the CTO. What's happening with uh, the, obviously the, the, the market, one, two, and then talk about the expertise in, 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 uh, in EMC right now. A lot of the database guys on board. What's happening? I think when you talk about the high performance database side of things, you're going to find a few items that come to mind. First of course, Oracle here at Open World. So when we focus on that as a workload of interest, going back to the early days of vBlock, one of those key workloads has always been Oracle. There's others of course, but when we think about optimizing or tuning or making something that's a beneficial way to approach that application specifically, We've done that with general systems in the past, but we're starting to see from customers a demand for, I've got to have something that is very Oracle specific and aligned from a stack point of view to say, I'm going to be putting my Oracle investments on that V block. Okay, so you got Oracle doing their uh, engineered systems thing. Sure. Do they open you with open arms and, and so welcome you with open arms, say, yeah, come on in, we'll help you integrate, or uh, what's that all like? So I know Larry and Saffer are good friends. Oh, well. <laughs> we, saw, um, we heard that yesterday. Yeah. But, uh, so clearly there's relationships at the Cisco, the EMC, and to some extent the VMware level. And yeah. what we're looking for really is just how do we accelerate the adoption of our customers taking on Oracle workloads specific to a vBlock investment. That's, that's our tie-in. Um, as to how open arms it might be, I, I would say we're probably on even footing with any other partner that might be out there. Yeah, because they want to they make their stuff run faster. Absolutely. And they realize Absolutely. it's not 100% is not going to run on Oracle. So, sure. okay. so. What does it mean to optimize for high performance database? Specifically, what did you have to do with Oracle to achieve that objective? Key things for us were really starting with what the database administrator's concerns were. Uh, they wanted to see certain things related to how they could load more effectively, faster, maybe in terms of how they would manage the landscape of the investment that's out there. So some of the things that we'll be doing, there'll be some stories about vision intelligent operations software, which you probably heard about previously, how that'll tie into things if you're looking at it from a Oracle uh, management perspective. But today, really the story is around getting those metrics that are important just to DBAs. And that's a big part of it. It's not the entire piece of it, but it's a big part of it. And yeah, we heard strong messaging actually yesterday in the keynotes from uh, the executives at EMC mm -hmm. about uh, 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 targeting the DBAs. Now, of course, you're in a similar boat. You guys traditionally will sell to infrastructure people. Correct. Um, Correct. And certainly in your case, you know, with Cisco, the networking crowd, mm -hmm. uh, the, the server guys. But it's infrastructure folks. It is. And you got, in the Oracle world, you've got the DBAs and the application heads really driving the decision making. So, what matters specifically to a DBA and what are you doing in particular to address their requirements? Satisfying IOPS is the, probably the top item. Uh, another one could be concerned with the relative spend of compute to those IOPS requirements that you're talking about. A uh, good example came from a customer I talked with recently. They had a generalized system and they were able to do things like take the higher end blades and deprecate those for application development as opposed to the Oracle development because they were getting the IOPS that were coming back from the array. They weren't necessarily thinking of it as a compute constrained issue, it was a IOPS constrained issue. So by actually using lesser blades they were able to satisfy the Oracle as a service side. Now, 
that was a neat thing for them, but how do we extend that to say, here's a purpose-built approach to doing and satisfying that one requirement. And so those are the things that are going into those specialized systems. So you specifically, Jay, you mentioned IOPS. Yes. Uh, um, where does latency fit in? Latency is a big piece of it, clearly. And so things that we'll be leveraging related to extreme um, IO, the SF side, that's, that's the part we're picking up a lot of that. So but generally performance, it, it, you know, there's a high level requirement is, is top on, on, the, on the DBA's list, yeah. is, is what you're saying. Now, <clears throat> so this is, a, the, the new product's called the 340, correct? So there's a uh, 340 which represents the enhancements that have taken place in the VNX line, for example. And then there is the VBlock specialized systems for high performance databases. And if you look at the 340, that would be things that are based around the, C, uh, the B series, the blades. And then when you look at the specialized systems, that'll be where we're including C series from Cisco, which okay. are the servers. Okay, so the 340's more general purpose. So talk more yes. about when a customer would make the decision to go toward the, the specialized system. A specialized system would probably be one you would find where they have centered on database as a service or they've got a database corner of a horizontal that all of the application teams would tie into or they have a specific practice around database specific. And that would, again, go back to what you were saying before about the people that are driving those decisions being specifically oriented to a concern for today, Oracle, but clearly we're going to be looking at DB2 and SQL Server long term. So obviously those, those in more intensified database uh, environments and applications are what you're targeting. Yeah. And they're high value, right? right. Driving revenue typically for companies. What kind of premium would I have to pay to get the specialized system? I mean, even rough so percentage terms. It's, it's actually no different than if you were purchasing from Cisco or EMC or any of those uh, parts uh, and you put them together yourself. The difference is, is that what we're doing is the well, risk you'd pay a premium if you did that, right? Well, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> certainly. Sorry, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> we're going to compare commodity to the customer would pay a premium. Well, right. absolutely. But so relative to other V blocks, you're not, you're saying you're not charging a premium for Correct. this. Correct. Okay, so it's, it's pick, your, pick your choice and yeah. Where there's no there's no price penalty for doing that. Well, we also believe that there's going to be a question of what I can mix and match within that design. So, for example, uh, you talk about the red stack view of the world, where you really are staying between the rails from an Oracle point of view, and this is a specific version of database, for example. We would actually entertain having multiple versions of those databases on that same specialized system. And indeed, you could actually put applications or other things that would complement that on that same system. But you're adding, I got to ask you, you're adding value. Yeah. Um, why not charge for it? Well, what we would like to see, of course, is greater adoption of vBlock in general. We believe that mixed workloads are the way things are going to go, but we definitely see that there are, there are those folks, those application owners, those DBAs, that really believe that vBlock specialized systems for high performance databases is a product that they need to see. Jay, can you, from a, from a technology perspective, um, can you, and even ecosystem, I sure. guess, can you compare and contrast the Red Stack approach sure. from the VCE approach? So I would say that the largest jump would be if you're looking at, I want to do a little bit of VMware, maybe a little bit of bare metal, maybe a little bit of other, maybe I want to do some Oracle of a specific version, maybe I want to start using 12C, but I also still have my existing investments in non-12C environments, and I want to mix and match those when I'm ready, but I want to do it within the exact same physical container. So deterministic power, weight, cooling, geometry, known spend to your point, you know, uh, uh, whatever that margin might be. And I do that and I execute that in a single experience with one company. And that's VCE. So you're actually getting some variety of choice in what application workloads you can put to complement Oracle in that mix. Okay, so let me follow up on that. So Oracle would say, Oracle, I'm an Oracle sales okay, guy, yeah, I'm going to yeah. go in and say, hey, yeah, that's true, but we have end-to-end -end integration throughout the stack all the way up through the application. We're the only guys that can do that. We can take advantage of you know, hybrid columnar and all this other cool yeah, stuff. Sure. And we really are one company. Um, yeah. Those guys, there's a joint venture, V, there's C, there's E. How do you respond to that? I would concede that you are indeed one company. I would also say that we actually bring in best of breed solutions from a variety of places. I get to judiciously decide you know, what part of the investor stack I choose from, which Cisco products, which EMC products, what networking technology from Cisco I bring into that. And as I pull all that together in conjunction with Panduit, Corning, and others, I'm delivering a system that thermally speaking, physically speaking, is extremely deterministic and easy for you to consume right now. So Oracle is certainly trying to sell the world that it is best of breed. I haven't bought that yet. Um, right, I mean, Oracle's best of breed in a lot of parts of the absolutely, stack. Absolutely, absolutely. But, but yeah. you know, at the compute layer, the, the storage layer, you know, it's got, it's got work to do. Um, and, you know, arguably the networking piece, not even arguably, the networking piece is Little certainly thin. another, another discussion. Thin. Right, yeah. right, it's narrow. I mean, generally the whole stack in terms of its use case is relatively narrow, even though 
you know, the applications within Oracle are, are broad. And then they come at that from a strength point of view, right? They're saying that yeah. because we're so focused, I would call it myopic, but they're, they're narrowed down and focused in that one area. Um, what we see is that no customer that we've interacted with says they're just going to do that one thing. So Oracle spends a lot of money in R&D, as you know. Yes. They're intensely focused, um, and, and you know, they're, they're a lot like, they're a lot like you know, EMC and VMware and Cisco in sure, a way. They're sure. intense competitors, right? So what gives you confidence that, they, that you'll be able to maintain your edge, your best of breed edge over time. Talk about that a little bit. So we have access to 20 billion plus in R&D across all of our investors. We get to, again, judiciously include that technology when it makes the most sense for the workloads that we're concerned with for our customers. So today we're talking about Oracle, uh, tomorrow we'll be talking about DB2, and beyond that we'll be talking about SQL Server. Maybe not even in that order, but we'll be talking about them. And we believe that that kind of a mix and match metaphor is going to be something we're going to see more of, not less of. So I take, uh, I know, I know the EMC number, I, I, don't, I presume, I don't know if VMware's in here, and I, I'm sure Cisco's not in there, mm -hmm. but EMC has 80,000 Oracle customers. Um, so I guess, you could, you could, I'm sure there's Great a, partner. You can add in you know, some, some, some numbers there for, for Cisco, right, to add it to that number. So you have access to 80,000 customers. Oracle has 40,000 hardware customers. Mm -hmm. So you've got twice the, access to twice the number of customers that Oracle has today. Now, those customers, as we talked about earlier, are largely infrastructure yes. customers, uh, but nonetheless, it's a big customer base. What are they telling you, and, and what's the relationship with the DBAs and the application heads within those customers? Uh, so there's a good blog post that one of my protégés, Jeremiah Dooley, put out, and it's got a little cartoon where uh, someone defines a problem at the management layer, they then go back out to the project team, management team then goes back to the EA, explains that problem to them, and the EA says, well actually that's not the problem, and then everyone assumes the EA is the idiot. <laughs> so what we're hoping for is that we can simplify as much as possible that infrastructure. Um, I th we have a slide that we throw out a lot of times in presentation, infrastructure is boring. Doesn't mean it's not important, and it definitely doesn't mean it's easy, but we think it can be really awesome. And so to do that, we really have to, not depart from a speeds and feeds discussion per se, those are important metrics that DBA is going to be concerned with, but we want to put them at ease. We want to make sure that application owners know that there's a way for them to also enjoy into that conversation and not feel that either one of those parties is necessarily coloring the discussion. Um, I think that the idea is that the application begins with what the users consume, and then the infrastructure should kind of blend away into the background. It's still important, it's there, but we need to make sure that the application owner can drive what the users are consuming. Jay, we had Steve uh, Caramon before. He's uh, the Oracle alchemist. I don't know if you know him on Twitter. And, uh, and he's former DBA yes. you know, practitioner. And we were asking him what, what DBAs care about. He said he agreed with you. Number one, performance. Second thing he said is, the way he put it I thought was interesting. We at the DBA, speaking for the DBA community, we're sick of being the, the bottleneck. Um, <laughs> we don't like that. We don't like being in that perceived position. Perceived or otherwise, actually. Yeah, perceived yeah. or otherwise. You yeah. know, it's just, it's not working for us. You know, we've got to yeah. move on. So what can you do, so first of all, what, hmm. do, you th what do you think he means by that, and, and what can you guys do to help folks like you know, that DBA, that proxy for that DBA, not be the bottleneck? Well, uh, we haven't talked about security at all. Um, another context for security might be, how do I tenantize and carve up allocated infrastructure units more effectively so that I believe I can do more A-B testing? I think that's one of the areas that DDAs have been, not necessarily, uh, you know, stranded as far as resource concern, but to be able to say, I want to test an idea out. How can I effectively do that? How do I test for A and test for B? Come back and do those tests in a rapid iterative fashion. You can't, basically. Well, yeah. and historically. So, historically, yeah. and what we're, what we're after at VCE, of course, is to enable that type of consumptive behavior on the DBA side, and obviously on the application stack side. Where I see it going is, those will be improvements that take place over time because of specific infrastructure investments. And I believe those investments will be vBlock systems. So, well, so where does cloud play into that whole discussion? Well, the self-service animated you know, discussion could go on for hours on that piece of it, but I believe there need to be very quick hit tactical tools to allow for those DBAs to quickly get into their landscape, carve up the areas that represent those A-B tests, get back out again, but more importantly, communicate that back upstream to the developers. So you think of what we do with release compatibility matrices, our tag release way of keeping all of these various pieces of software in synchronization. I want to see that flow up and be part of the continuous delivery, de continuous deployment side of things. So I wonder if we could sort of up, go back to that security discussion yeah. and up level of the bit. You, it's, you, you said off camera, it's something that's near and dear to your yes, heart. Absolutely. So you, you've got some expertise there. Some of the writers in Silicon Angle, when we were prepping for Oracle Open World, said, you know, when you get a, a, a guest on that knows security, we'd like you to sort of probe a little bit, because it's an important topic and you can never talk enough yeah. about it. Yeah. 
So from your perspective, let's start, let's start with the state of, of security. What, what do you see as the state of security? What are the big sort of trends that you see there that the industry is grappling with and, and needs to respond to? Yeah, so uh, I guess the elephant in the room is the fact that the Amazon booth is way down on that end of the hall. And I still remember living social and I still remember that 48 hours later, the Amazon team kind of floated out through the PR release mechanism. Oh, by the way, we have a cloud HSM offering, by the way. Just, you know, just so you know, if, if someone had maybe used that, maybe these things might not have happened. And there's no way to back it into the future and say, we, you know, we, we'll do that differently next. We've already done it, it's, it's been exposed. What I think is going to have to happen is, whether it's a posture, a hardening guide, it has to be intrinsic to the manufactured experience. So I'm actually pleased that Oracle does have these manufactured systems. I'm pleased that IBM, that HP, and these others are doing it because it gives you a chance to put in some of those best practices and some of that enforcement of posture day zero. Not day one, day zero. From the factory it comes with at least some modicum of protection or some thought around what might happen once this goes, you know, again, plug it in, log in, and go. And if we know anything about the, the, the folly of defaults, is that you can do things. And sure. so, All right, go ahead, finish it. <laughs> what I was going to say is, I would like to see those defaults be sensible and be mindful of the current vectors and uh, kind of the, the salvos that are being launched against in infrastructures today. So if we can be party to that and uh, be a part of some of these wider uh, cloud security alliance solutions, I'd, I'd love to see more of that, not less of it. Hardening the top, as John Hoffman <laughs> says. Yeah, yeah. I mean, Hard candy shell, yeah. I mean, the performance message has been pretty clear. Extreme software cache has gotten a lot of buzz here. Yeah. Um, going to a little quick, uh, quick explanation of what's going on with so uh, extreme software cache relative to Oracle, mm -hmm. and then how does the V-Block and the VCE package move from this high-end to mainstream IT, what's the, yeah. is orchestration the key issue, so or what's the core issue? That's great, so one of the things that's going to be also part of a, a tag onto our last story that we told on the 17th of September was we announced our next release of Vision Intelligence Operations Software, which will include the beginnings of how we're going to allow you to do these kinds of upgrades in the field to take advantage of that A-B test again, say hey, I see a feature, I might want to take that from EMC related to that extra um, software, how can I bring that in and make sure that I'm not knocking down three boards in the process? And that's the part of VC that's probably not as well uh, discussed, but it's, it's all that regression testing we're doing behind the scenes, all that pre-engineering and validation on their behalf. So when new things come out, we'd like for our customers to be able to take advantage of it immediately. The, uh, Dave and I always talk about VC because we've been following since the Cube started in 2010 at EMC World and went to yeah. Sapphire. We talked with uh, you know, Tom Peck at Levi's at the time and mm -hmm. you know, VC really, vision was great, but a lot's changed in four years. So sure. what's your take in the final two minutes? Let's talk about kind of what's changed and how has VC evolved at a high level? Kind of what's the positioning technically? What's going on under the hood? Obviously, a lot's happened with VMware, now Pivotal. Yeah. Uh, what's, what's, the, what's, the, what's the, how did it morph? What's it morphing into? Oh, well thank you for the Pivotal segue. Um, so let's just do a some perspective historically. 2010, I joined the company. The biggest drive I could source back then, about two terabytes, big drive. Now we're going to be seeing things like a two terabyte blade. It'll be, you know, RAM. Within a couple more years, I fully expect there's going to be developers using things like these pivotal stacks that are going to demand a two terabyte heap. Not RAM, heap. Yeah. Just a heap for one allocation of one application because they want to do that type of in-memory manipulation. They're going to want to crawl across the wire, RDMA, that stuff, see it, pull it, manipulate it, shove it back in somewhere else. So I see that progression taking place. Yeah. And each, again, of our investor technologies is aligning in those directions. So for me, it's exciting to kind of see how we can put together in our timelines, in our uh, customer-facing roadmaps, and then what we also keep, you know, that we know about on a three to five year basis. And I know that over time, uh, it gets really complex to explain it all, yeah. but our, our goal again is to package it for easy consumption. Yeah, I mean, at a high level, Dave and I try to compartmentalize it for the, for the average you know, IT folk out there, and that is, is that Hyperscale has really laid out a great vision for scale out. Yeah. You see Facebook, these guys building their own stuff. Absolutely. If you're an IT enterprise, I want Hyperscale, but I don't want to do all that work. True, right? I true. mean, that's ultimately what they want, right? It's a, pack, so, it's a packaging discussion. I mean, if we, if we look at where things are flowing towards, there's, the, there's a commodity curve and a decommodity curve. And I think that over time you're going to see things like you know, open hardware, open uh, rack, um, open data center initiatives. There are going to be things that fall out of that. Uh, there's an acronym soup all around it. Everyone's kind yeah. of you know, vying for the opportunity to be a party of that. There's legacy too. I'm oh, honestly, you know, I got clearly, Red Hat over here, I got some storage, I had mix and match. But at the end of the day, you talk about developers, right? Oh, sure. they, need, yeah. they need a scalable uh, infrastructure under the hood from a compute standpoint, storage and networking, so they can do whatever they want. They, they don't want, need to, they don't yeah. need to, to do Python, Rails, whatever they're going to do. Yeah. They need to do that. So that's kind of where it's action. VC always had that nice package, but again, high end. Ask a 20-year-old Ruby developer if he even knows what a LUN is. 
No, they don't. Exactly. Uh, it's, that's you know, why DevOps is so hot right yeah. now. So. They, they want WIM-based infrastructure. I desire it, I want to go get it. You know, and today it's a credit card transaction for a lot of places. And I think what's going to happen in the enterprise is they're going to be hiring millennials in increasing numbers. They're going to have to satisfy that demand. So since the Nasir acquisition, you saw you know, Software Defined become the big thing. So sure. final just segment here, real quick riff on. Okay. You know, obviously Nasir created the, the, that boom of awareness of hey, you know what? Right. Software Defined uh, and virtualization being a key enabler in that. And Martin Casada uh, said on theCUBE at VMware last, last uh, time we were here, yeah. hey, virtualization is still the enabling technology, right? right? So right. virtualization is not going away. Um, where is VC going to go with all this happening with virtualization, with data, the heap thing you mentioned is a great example of how coders can leverage resource. What's the big challenge? Is it orchestration? Is it still pushing virtualization to the end? Uh, what's your take on all that? So I, I absolutely believe it's orchestration oriented as the challenge. Um, even if you look at Gartner's numbers when they were grading the different types of cloud management platforms that are out there, nobody gets 100%, nobody. You know, I think at best you get 70% coverage from VMware today in, in their most gracious allocation of where they you know, do their def definition of what a management platform would look like at maturity level. So whether it's a CA, a BNC, Cisco's um, UCS director, all the investments that have been made by EMC and their, you know, their mergers and acquisitions, someone's going to have to put together something that's going to allow someone to carve up this stuff, make it easier to consume and use. And that's where I think the, that's the, that's the most nascent part of the market, right? Well, John, now. we said several years ago that that whole management space was jump ball, you know? Yeah. Yeah, so let's talk about uh, just final question before we break here. Okay. Is, uh, uh, EMC's always had a great office of the CTO since I've known EMC yep. over the past decade and recently the past five years. Um, scouring the landscape, yes. right? And Joe Tucci's you know, hardcore about making sure that they're reinventing the future and investing. And we, no we stone heard, unturned. We heard Annie, Annie earlier on, Annie, Annie McClure talking about some of the database chops they're bringing in, yeah. really large scale, not kind of like Johnny come lately's in the market, yeah. really deep expertise. Um, let's talk about EMC Ventures, right? Sure. The office of the CTO had a tight relation, always had a tight relationship with EMC Ventures. What's your relationship now with the EMC Ventures? How do you talk to those guys? Uh, are you involved in some of the investment discussions? Can you share a little bit? Of Were you reading my inbox this morning? <laughs> uh, so yes, uh, you know, clearly it's going to come up. Um, Cisco has an arm. Um, what was your, what in, was your email first? Uh, <laughs> well, Tucci said do some investments? No, 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 it was, uh, it was, it was related but unrelated, I would say. Um, <laughs> okay. and, and no confirmation or uh, denial of that. But what I would also say is you know, Cisco has an arm, Intel has an arm, VMware has an arm, EMC has an arm. What we're focused on, again, is when we come across things, we have a lot of customers we interact with, names come up, and companies come up that have really just beautiful, elegant solutions that may have occurred to someone at some point in time, but if they've really got that vision, they've got that thought, and more importantly, they've got some existing customers they've already talked to, uh, you're going to see a lot of those kinds of introductions taking place. So I, I would consider us to be part of that canvassing operation. If we get to talk to a lot of people, see a lot of things. Final question, what fruit is going to come off the VCE tree in the next couple of years? Obviously you guys have a great investment, you've learned a lot over the past four years, you have great big deployments, some of the numbers are significant, the dollars is good, Joe Tucci's kind of bragging about up on stage. Sure. Um, you know, a lot of criticisms early on, but you know, it's kind of in the right, to be directionally correct as with the trend line. So what's the fruit going to come off the tree, you know, VCE wise? In terms of products, value, dollars, you know, feel free to, to uh, share. I think if anything, if there's an assumption up front that how you consume a, a unit of IT in a data center is footnoted as comma a V block, I think we've done our job. And that's one of the jobs. There's many more to come, but simplifying that data center allocation unit, that's a big part of it for us. Virtualization is still a driving trend. This is the cube. Obviously, we know VBlock virtualization is going to be key. Virtualizing storage, virtualizing uh, databases, virtualizing everything up and up to the stack, giving the developers the freedom to take advantage of an amazing amount of RAM, persistent flash, and ultimately still spinning disk. Uh, and then, as Jeremy Bird says, maybe some tape later on yeah. thrown in. Uh, but tape sucks, as he says. But uh, <laughs> Jay, thanks for coming inside the cube. Really Thank appreciate you, it. EMC is doing great stuff. Again, EMC, great partner of ours. Uh, for supporting theCUBE. We want to thank you guys, and VC in particular. Thank you. It's been a great run. We're going to continue theCUBE uh, next year as well. This is Oracle Open World. We're going to be back with more live coverage day three here at, uh, in live in San Francisco. Fresh off the America's Cup ultimate comeback win. San Francisco's uh, on fire. Big party tonight. I'm sure Larry Ellis is going to make an appearance at some point. This is theCUBE. We'll be right back with our next guest after this short break. <laughs>